What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show recap with Mo. Well, we're getting ready to get into another breakdown of Tyler Perry sisters. But before we get into this thing, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss shit and it's going down. All right. So the episode we're getting ready to get into is for season seven, episode number 14, titled All for the D. Now, the synopsis states. Gary Savagery continues as he plants a seed in Jordan's head about Andy, all while screwing Hayden's girl right in their home. When Karen finds out Danny is telling her business, the tension between the women grows. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this day. All right, y'all. So we kicked this episode off where we left off with Gary and Jordan. So Jordan has been on this stakeout. He's trying to find out, you know, the whereabouts of his sister Penelope or whatnot. So in the previous episode, he decided to follow Gary from the police station. So as we kick off this episode, we see Gary is actually on the back seat. And he's pretty much telling Jordan that he has a lot of balls for following him, you know, around the city or whatnot. Gary's like, look, bro, you obviously don't know who I am. And then Jordan turns around and he's like, look, man, stop with the ish. I just want to know where my sister is or whatnot. Gary tells Jordan that he doesn't know where she is. And as a matter of fact, he's actually looking for her himself. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what, bro? So anyhow, Jordan is talking directly to Gary and he's like, look, bro, if you did anything to my sister, I promise you. And Gary's like, look, man, why would I harm the woman that's carrying my unborn child? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, yeah, I saw it too. So I'm like, <laughs> I said, oh boy, it's good. So anyhow, Jordan tells Gary that he doesn't care about his sister, but Gary wants, you know, Jordan to understand and know that he cares about his succession. It means everything to him, as he stated, right? But Jordan doesn't believe him, and he tells him that he knows a liar when he sees one. And I'm like, bruh, like, you got a whole liar that you just hired. Talking about Ethan. We'll talk about him a little bit later. And you did not see that liar sitting in your living room. Anyhow, we're going to move on from that. But, um... Anyhow, you know, Jordan has had enough, so he decides to get up out of the car and jerk um, Gary up out of his vehicle or whatnot. Gary's like, all right, man, I got you, I got you, we good, we good. But he's like, look, I just got one question to ask you. He was like, what is it? He says, look, before you met Andy, wasn't your life drama free? Because I know mine was, and it wasn't until I met her that I had drama, right? And I'm sitting here knowing who Gary is, but I'm, I'm sitting here believing him because he believes his lies. Like, he's great at manipulation, man. Like, dang. <laughs> like, I can see this dude doing it, but he's so good at conveying these messages to people that you actually believe him. If you did not know who he was as a person, as an individual, you would be like, I believe him, right? So anyhow, going on from there, you know, he tells Jordan that, you know, he believes that Andy knows exactly where Penelope is at the moment. Now, of course, Jordan isn't buying that. But at the same time, you know, Gary is planting a seed in Jordan's mind because we could tell when he goes and he actually speaks to Andy that he's a little bit different in his mindset, you know, at least for the time being. So anyhow, you know, Jordan drives off, he leaves or whatnot. But be oh, but before he leaves, though. Gary made sure to tell him that, hey, if you decide to follow me again around the city, I'm going to make sure that they're looking for you. And I'm like, hey, he just gave you the evidence that you needed to know that, hey, I did do something to your sister. But obviously he didn't catch it. He drove off and, you know, you know, Gary feels good about himself. He feels like he's going to get away with it. And then all of a sudden we see Hudson coming down from the other side and he's like hey do you want me to follow him or whatnot Gary's like no let him go you know let him go ahead and go home to old girl or whatnot talking about Andy so from there we see Andy who's obviously at Jordan's crib coming down the steps or whatnot the next morning and she sees Jordan you know pretty much standing you know up but he's bent over you know behind the couch or whatnot and he's looking stressed right now. He really is concerned about his sister Penelope. And he conveys to Andy that he hasn't slept all night. So she was like, oh, babe, you know, 
I'm sorry about that. Whoa. whoa, whoa. So anyhow, furthermore, he wants to know why Andy and his sister Penelope were, you know, pretty much keeping information away from him while they were digging up information or attempting to dig up information on Gary. Now, Andy tells him that they were trying to, well, that she was trying to protect Penelope's wishes by not telling him what was going on. And then she goes on to say, you know, you got that election going on, whoop, whoop, whoop. And he was like, look, I don't give a care about that dang old election. I just want to know what my sister is or whatnot. So anyhow, from there, we head over to Karen's, you know, salon or whatnot, where we see her being greeted by Pam as she enters the building. Pam tells Karen that, you know, she started about their conversation or whatnot. And she states that if Karen doesn't want, you know, Aaron to be involved with her business, just say the words. Karen tells her that she doesn't have a problem, you know, at all with him doing that. And I'm like, hold on, Karen. <laughs> like, we're not going to play no games here. Because when you found out that he was involved in that situation, you folded those arms and you was like, so y'all wasn't going to tell me? Y'all wasn't going to tell me nothing about it? And I was <laughs> So... <laughs> so I'm like, okay, just say the word, Karen. So obviously she feels like she's good with it and she tells her to keep going on. And if Aaron is, you know, supplying you what you need, just keep it going or whatnot. Pam is like, are you sure? Karen is like, yeah, I'm good. All right. So anyhow, she's cool with it. That's where we got it. So anyhow, from there, uh, while everything is going good in their discussion, everything is coming out, you know, in walks Aaron with some bags in his hands. And I'm like, dad gone. Now, let me go ahead and admit, because I feel like I was wrong with my statement. I stated that, you know, Aaron was going to handle this situation in the best type of way. Obviously, I'm dad gone wrong because this man is showing up on every, <laughs> every single occasion. Like, bro. <laughs> this man. This man found out that he was the father of one of the twins. He's showing up every day, at least every other day, with a gift. All right? So anyhow, when he enters the building, Pam is like, hey, how you doing? And, you know, Karen is not glad to see him. Like, she's already told this brother to call. And he has yet to call, obviously, because he catches Karen off guard every time. So anyhow, while he's there, Pam, you know, informs him that she has yet to receive her wire. So go ahead and do that. He tells her that, you know, his accountant has sent it through. And she was like, OK, all right, I'll let you know when I get it. So anyhow, from there, you know, he tells Karen that he needs to talk to her real quick. And while they're getting ready to leave. For some daggone reason, you know, through that process, he lifts the bags up enough for Pam to see the bags. And I'm sitting here like, golly, man. So she was like, oh, oh, those are for the baby? You brought some baby gifts? Oh, you want to be the godfather? <laughs> I said, I said, no, nah, baby girl, he more than <laughs> <laughs> he more than that. So anyhow, you know, um, uh, what's her name? Karen is like, oh my gosh, let's go ahead and head back to the office. So anyhow, they head back to the office and you can tell by the look on her face that she is not pleased because she did not want anything to come out at this moment. So she was like, okay, so why are you here? Like, what did you bring? He was like, well, I brought some baby bottles and all of this stuff, some some unisex this, some unisex that, and all of this stuff. And Karen is like, okay, but why did you bring it here? And I'm like, yeah, why did you bring it here? And he was like, well, you know, I thought that you would have already conveyed that information to the people by now. She was like, when I'm ready. And I'm like, yeah, bro, you're doing a little bit too much, Aaron. So anyhow, from there, you know, while they're still in the midst of their conversation, Aaron is telling her that he's going to be there for the baby. He's actually scheduled a training class for Karen to go to, you know, so she'll be ready for the birth. And Karen is like, OK, isn't that what the Internet is for? And he was like, no, I mean, we can do we can go ahead and do this training or whatnot. So while he's in the middle of, you know, pretty much telling her that he's honored to be one of the fathers of the twins. Right. Pam is standing at the door and she's like, oh, <laughs> for real? That's what you, that's what you. <laughs> so Karen is like, oh, no. 
<laughs> so she tells Pam not to tell nobody. She's like, no, nah, I ain't going to tell nobody. <laughs> what y'all got going? What y'all got going on? So anyhow, you know, she walks up out. She's talking under her breath, talking about she can't believe this. She ain't never seen nothing like this. <laughs> Let me just give a shout out to the writers for giving Pam a lot more to talk about in these episodes instead of, you know, those little one-liners she's been doing because she's actually hilarious when it comes to some of the things she's been doing for the last couple episodes or whatnot. So anyhow, going on from there, we head over to the branch where we see Maurice is still up to no good. He's still with the mess. And we see Sabrina coming out of her office and she's giving him a hug. And she's like, look, I'm just so glad that you're back. Maurice is like, you've already told me that. Whoa, whoa. But enough for talking about me. I want to know why you've been spending so much time in that office. I think I heard a little bit of vibration going on in there. Like, what you been doing? She was like, I ain't been doing none of that. What you talking <laughs> in that office or whatnot. Sabrina tells him that she's just been super, super busy. He was like, doing what? He was like, hopefully looking in the Guinness Book of World Records, talking about Karen, talking about she has to be a new entry with all them baby daddies she got. And, I'm <laughs> and Maurice is like, I ain't never heard no mess like that until I got around you and your messy friends. And I'm like, man, that comment is strong. That goes a long way, Sabrina. That's coming from Maurice, who I know for sure has seen a lot of mess. All right. So anyhow, going on from there, Sabrina's looking around the building like, Shh, you're supposed to be quiet about that. Like, you're supposed to be acting like you don't know. But I hope that he doesn't go out and tell anybody about this. I hope that he doesn't. But who knows, right? So then Sabrina's like, well, I think it's actually great that she has two baby fathers. You know, she got two men that actually care or whatnot. And Maurice, you know, I'm with you when you write. I feel like he's right on this because it's not a great situation. And since that's the case, the only positive that Maurice can see from this situation is the fact that she would receive two child support checks. It is what it is. And we can't turn back the hands of time. So anyhow, going on from there, since we're talking about pregnancy, Maurice wants to know, you know, what's going on with her process. How's it going? Has she found a donor and all of this stuff? Whoop, whoop, whoop. And of course, Sabrina conveys to him that she has yet to find one, right? And you know, if you've listened to my platform at all, you would know how I feel about this situation with Sabrina and this whole fertility search and all of this good stuff. Like, she got an old boy over here who's taking her cookies, and I ain't really going to get into it right now, but I'm definitely going to get into it later on in this episode, so it is coming, right? So just stay tuned. Anyhow, we head over to the airport where we see Danny finishing up with a customer. When we see Tony standing in the line with that I'm sorry face, talking about, hey, these are for you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, nah, bro. You got to come harder than that because you were hard in the apartment. You see what I'm saying? So anyhow, don't come back to the job with one single steel rose talking about ADs for you. And I'm like, <laughs> so anyhow, she was like, look, what you got to say? Go ahead and say what you need to say. He wants to apologize, you know. And the way that he was apologizing seemed like he was still putting it on her. And she felt it. And she pointed it out because after he got done saying what he was saying, she said what she needed to say by saying, you know, maybe you need to find someone, you know, that can do all the things that you need, you know, such as child proofing an apartment at the last minute because you didn't give me a heads up because this was a last minute situation. Not only that, what happened to the parents telling their child to sit their tail down somewhere when you go over to a guest house? Shoot, I remember going over to people's houses and, and before we got out of the car, my parents were, or my aunt, anybody, a grown family member, whoever it was, they gave us the speech. Everybody knows what that speech is, or you should know what that speech is, right? Don't touch nothing, don't say nothing. You should be seen, but not heard. That was it. Like, there were no questions asked. Like, me and my brothers, we knew exactly what was going down, and, and we had no problems, I mean, we sat over there like three blind mice. Like, I ain't see nothing. I ain't touch nothing. I ain't hear nothing. You know what I'm saying? And when it was time to go, when they called your name the first time, we were ready to go. Don't let me have to call you a second time because you about to get embarrassed, man. I got a story I could <laughs> I got a story I could share with y'all. I'm going to share it later on, but daggone it. Moving on, man. From there, we head over to the law firm where we see Fatima 
in deep meditation right now as Andy is walking through the hallway. She sees um, Fatima in the office. So when she comes into the office, she calls her name, but Fatima doesn't answer. So when she finally realizes what she's doing, she asks Fatima, what's up? Like, what's going on? Fatima tells her that she's trying to, you know, center herself or whatnot, because right now she's nervous about this first grade from her first exam in law school or whatnot. So Andy's sitting over here patting her on the back and she's like, you good, girl. You got this. You smart. You kind and you important, right? So anyhow, <laughs> so anyhow, um, she gets a ding on her phone notifying her that she has received her grade and it's like, there it is. Go ahead and pull it up. Long story short, she did not do too well. But not only that, the actual instructor left a memo stating that they expected more from Fatima. So that, that was a gut blow as well. Um, something else that happened during this scene was the fact that Fatima asked Andy, you know, about that whole LPI situation. Was she going to, you know, testify? And Andy is like, yeah, I've decided to testify against Gary. And I'm sitting here like, chick, you had no choice. Like it was either you or Gary. Like, you obviously are going to choose yourself in all of this, right? So anyhow, while they sitting in the midst talking and whatnot, here comes Hayden, right? Hayden's walking through, and then for some daggone reason, he's coming in the room as she's receiving this bad news about her exam or whatnot, and he's talking about, mm, mm, mm. look at these two bitter, hurt women. And I'm sitting here like, bro, why are you doing this at this moment? Nobody is bothering you. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was feeling, you know, some type of way about the way that Tamara was doing this dude, how Gary was doing this dude. But now it's warranted. Like, I no longer feel guilty about what's about to happen to you. And I hope that Miss Marie gives it to you. All right. And I'm. <laughs> y'all know what I mean. I ain't mean it in a, in a, in a positive way. I know she's trying to give him something, but I'm hoping that she sees who he truly is and turns his world upside down. So anyhow, going on from there, since we're talking about his world being turned upside down, next we head over to his office where we see him calling his fiance Tamara. Now he's worried. Well, I wouldn't say he's really worried, but he's upset because he's been trying her all day and has yet to speak to her. So now that he's actually speaking to her, he's like, where you been? Like I've been calling you or whatnot. Now, Tamara's like, well, you know, I've been busy and I didn't have my phone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So now Hayden is like, okay, so what do you have planned for the day? She was like, well, I actually got some family business to take care of, but I didn't want to bother you with all of that. Now, while she's telling him this, the camera moves slightly towards the left. And now we are seeing Gary sitting directly in front of Tamara at Hayden's house, right? So I'm like, what the heck is going on? So anyhow, he tells her to wrap this ish up and he says it loud enough for Hayden to hear on the phone. So, of course, Hayden is like, oh, what is that? Who is that? So it's like, oh, that was the TV. And she's looking at Gary like, what the heck are you doing right now? Honestly, I do not believe that Hayden is buying that. He's smarter than that, even though I, even though I don't care for Hayden, he's smarter than that. He's a smart dude. Right. So anyhow, you know, she tells him all of that good stuff. Like, when do I need to be prepared for you to come home? He tells her that he's coming home later, whatnot, because of the case with Miss Maria, whatnot. So she was like, OK, I'll see you then. So she gets off the phone and she was like, Gary, why did you do that? He was like, man, I ain't interested in y'all little fake love or whatnot. That little fake tale relationship y'all got. She was like, first of all, it's not fake. He was like, well, what is it? I'm over here at this man's crib about to do you in in his room, in his bed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, Dad, man, that's that's messed up. Come on, Tamara. And she was like, she was standing her ground initially because she was like, no, that's foul. That's wrong. He's like, all right. And he got up and he said, come on with me. And she followed suit. <laughs> I don't like Gary either, but you got to respect him, man. Tamara will follow suit, man. She... <laughs> oh, man, y'all going to kill me, man. 
Oh, man. So anyhow, from there, we head over to see Jordan. He's doing this interview or whatnot, halfway dressed. He got the blazer on the top and a box of briefs on the bottom. Now, Ethan is over there supposedly working, but, you know, he's ear hustling at, at the same time so he can give, you know, Hudson and Gary what they need to know, right? So anyhow, you know, once he gets off the phone call, Ethan comes over and he's like, man, is everything good? You seemed a little off or whatnot. And Jordan is like, what do you mean? He was like, it just seemed like you were not all the way there. And he's like, anything you wish to share or whatnot. And Jordan is like, well, you know, I'm actually going through some personal issues right now, something that I'm not willing to share at this moment. And I'm like, good, don't share nothing. Keep that same energy all the time with this brother right here. So anyhow, you know, while he's sharing that with him, he was like, well, there is actually something that I need you to do. And Ethan is like, say less. So he tells him, you know, what he needs him to do. He needs him to look into this guy by the name of Hudson, no last name, but I'll send you an image of him or whatnot. And you can tell off top that Ethan has a problem with that because that's his employee as well, right? Not his employee, his employer. So, you know, Jordan sees that. In his body language and his facial expressions, he's like, are you good with that? He was like, oh, yeah. But you could tell he's uncomfortable. So as Jordan was watching him, as he was looking at him, I was like, okay, is he going to start to figure some things out? But obviously not in this episode, right? So, any <laughs> so anyhow, moving on from there, we head back over to the branch where we see Sabrina receiving a phone call from Karen. Now, Karen is just calling to check in on her and all of this good stuff. But I think that she was also calling to invite her to meet her at the salon as well. I cannot remember, but I think that's what it was. So anyhow, while she's on the phone with Karen, you know, Karen is just letting her know how she's feeling, how sometimes she's up, sometimes she's down. And then she goes on to ask Sabrina how, you know, how the fertility shots were going and all of that good stuff. And, you know, Sabrina's like, it's hard. It's painful, all of these good things, and she's feeling some of the symptoms that, you know, Karen is feeling at the same time, and Karen is like, just imagine if you really were pregnant, and then Sabrina's like, yeah, I know, because you, you're dealing with two baby daddies and all of this good stuff, and while she's talking, she ain't caught herself, but Karen is sitting over here smiling at one moment, and then the next moment, she's like, hold on, what did you say? Go ahead and rewind that back real quick. What did you just say to me? And then Sabrina finally catches herself like, what did I just say? Yeah, you just said what you just said when you said it. And now Karen done caught on to it and she was like, dad, go it, Danny. Because she knows that Danny was the one that told you. Now Sabrina is sitting up here talking about, well, you knew I was going to eventually find it out. She was like, well, in my time, not in Danny's time, not in anybody else's time. Not only that. She probably already feels this, though, that you've already told Maurice as well. So, you know, with Pam knowing, Maurice knowing, all of these other people knowing, Dad, going to, it's going to hit the streets. Karen got that new, new salon. It's going to hit the streets. People going to be talking. So, anyhow, going on from there, y'all, we head over to see Zach and Fatima at the crib. Now, little Michael's down there eating. You know, they're just conversing back and forth about some stuff. And, you know, he's telling her, you know, the whole situation about Karen and all of this good stuff, what he wants to do with the trust and all of that. So anyhow, from there, you know, Fatima notices her purse down on the floor, right up underneath the table. And she was like, I know that ain't my purse. And she says, Zach, this is a $5,000 purse. And I was like, the, you, you say it's what? And it's down on the floor. And why does your $5,000 purse have Crayola markings on it, right? And she was like, I know this dude did not mark <laughs> <laughs> and Zach is sitting over here talking about, hey, let's just put some dishwater on it. Now, I've never tried that with any of my wife, any of my wife's purses. I typically don't touch them unless she asks me to pick it up and I just bring it to her or whatnot or I give it to my daughter or whatnot. Either way, I don't really care to touch the bag. Definitely, if something is in it, something might happen to it. I don't want no, no problems, right? So anyhow, you know, that's a lot of money for a purse. Maybe not for everybody, but $5,000 on a bag is a whole, whole lot. So, of course, Fatima is pissed off. She tells him, look, don't follow me. I just need time to clear my head or whatnot. She picks up her purse and walks off. And I'm sitting here, <laughs> I'm sitting here like, Dad, go on, Fatima. It's just a bag. We can use the dishwater, right? 
wipe those Crayola marks off of it, you will be all right. So anyhow, from there, next we see um, Danny on the phone with her counselor, you know, pretty much talking about the whole situation with Tony or whatnot. Now, her counselor tells her, if Tony is trying to apologize to you, then you need to accept that and work through that. You need to accept that and move forward, all right? And Danny's like, look, that's gonna take me a while to deal with or whatnot. So anyhow, from there, while she's still on the phone, there's a knock at the door and it just so happens to be Karen. Now, when Karen was speaking to Sabrina, she had told Sabrina that, you know, hey, she was going to go over there and get into, you know, Danny's business or whatnot about telling her business. So anyhow, she comes over and she's like, look, I need to talk to you because what you did was not right. Danny's like, what are you talking about? She was like, you know what you did when you did what you did, because I wanted to be the one to share my business with the people that I wanted to share with. But unfortunately, now I do not have that opportunity. Right. So um, they go back and forth for a little while. She even talks about the fact that she was the one that put, you know, Zach up to get a DNA test and all of that stuff. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So she's just mad all around. Right. And she has a right to be upset that her so-called best friend, one of her best friends is telling her business outside of the sister circle. Since we're talking about the sister circle, you know, Danny's like, look, we're all part of the sister circle. It was only a matter of time before we all found out or whatnot. And then as Karen is walking out, she's talking about, we'll see about that. And I'm like, don't say that out of anger. Words are hard to take back once you say it. Once it's out there, it's hard to take back, Karen. So be careful with what you're saying, right? So anyhow, going on from there, next we see Fatima and Angela. Now, they meet up at a bar. Fatima pretty much conveys to Angela that, you know, she feels like she's going to miss out on this opportunity because right now she just doesn't have the bandwidth to keep this situation going. Like, she's going to work in the morning. When she comes home, she's working. And by the time she's ready to study, she's not able to put it in because she's asleep. And then the next morning, she's doing the same thing. She's going to work. She's coming home. She's doing the same thing at home. And then the next thing you know, she's just repeating the cycle. And she's not investing the time to study the material. She's going to have to change. And Angela pretty much tells her that she's going to have to put herself first in this situation and focus on, you know, achieving her goals as well. Anyhow, from there, since we're talking about achieving goals, let's talk about the next individual, Brother Hayden and Sister Tamara, right? So Tamara's at the crib, still got on her clothes that when Gary was over there, right? So I don't know why she didn't change, but she didn't, right? So now she's sitting on the couch, she's smiling and all this good stuff, receiving messages from Gary or whatnot. I can only assume. So anyhow, Gary comes in, not Gary, they the same, I guess. Hayden <laughs> Hayden comes in and he's like, what's good? So now Tamara is trying to hide her phone. And Hayden is like, hey, you ain't got to get off the phone. She was like, no, I was just on social media laughing at a meme. And he was like, oh, okay. So she was like, well, how was work? He tells her that work was good, but it was kicking my butt. But he also mentions that he feels like right now he currently has a leg up on Andy as well. And I guess we'll talk about that a little bit later. So anyhow, he's sniffing around the room and he smells this scent. And he was like, it, it smells like cedar and all of this good stuff, like very masculine. And of course, he was like, oh, that's my new perfume. And he was like, oh, you need to change that. So she tries to distract him by, you know, rubbing on him, caressing him and all of that good stuff. And he was like, OK. So anyhow, long story short, he notices that she's trying to climb up on him or whatnot. She's pushing her phone further backwards and trying to place the pillow on it. So he's like, why are you trying to hide your phone? She tells him, no, nah, I ain't trying to hide my phone. I'm just trying to, you know, please you and all this stuff. And of course, you know, she does what she needs to do to get his mind off of it. And he forgets about it, at least for right now. Right. Because she tells him that she's with him 100 percent. And I was like, really? <laughs> so anyhow, from there, since we're talking about that situation, let's go over here to Sabrina and Rich. Now, this is my thing. All right. So they into it. They doing their thing, thing in the bed, and they finish, right? So Sabrina gets up. She's talking about she needs to go to the shower and all of that good stuff. And he was like, okay, 
can I join you? She was like, yeah, come on. Now, before he can go join her, this dude has to search the mattress for the rubber. Now, the rubber has came off doing, you know, intercourse and whatnot, and now he's looking for it, and then he says something once he finally finds the rubber on the floor. He's like, man, I need some hot sauce, right? And I'm like, dang, for real? So in my head, I'm like, he does not trust Sabrina. When that dude made that comment right there, he does not trust Sabrina. Now, this is my thing. If Rich really doesn't truly want kids, why in the heck is he having sex? The condom slipping off. Why don't you just go get a vasectomy, my boy? I mean, if you really mean what you're saying, stand on business, go get the surgery, do what you need to do to take care of that, and then you won't have any concerns of somebody potentially trapping you at that moment. Anyhow, moving on from there, next we see Karen, you know, inviting Pam and Sabrina to the salon to pretty much tell them that she wants them together to plan her baby shower, right? So they're super, super excited about that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Moving on from there, next we see Tamara at the crib calling Gary to simply say good morning and to tell him that she had such a good time the other day. Gary's like, let me go ahead and stop you real quick. I don't need you to call me following up with me because we ain't got nothing going on like that. And she was like, huh? He was like, no, that means you got feelings. And that ain't what this is. What you is, is a booty call. <laughs> so, so now Tamara's like, I thought you was slightly feeling me. He was like, no, you know what? You knew what it was when we got into this. I, I ain't new to this. I'm true to this. I'm like, dang, God. And I'm laughing, y'all, because, listen, for Tamara to be in this line of work and not understand the type of dude that Gary is to fall for this Negro, I'm looking at her sideways. Like, you ain't supposed to get trapped up like you. You ain't supposed to get trapped like this, Tamara. You getting feelings right now, right? So anyhow, he tells her, you know what this is. So then he hangs up and seems like, okay. No, I think she hangs up, actually. Because now her feelings are hurt. So now she hangs up the phone and now, you know, she's talking about it. Okay, Gary, it ain't nothing but a quick edit. So I'm not sure what she meant by that. But obviously she was like, okay, I can mess your life up. And I was like, okay, we'll have to wait and see on that, right? So anyhow, from there, we head over to Jordan's crib where we see Tony and Rich on the couch. They're waiting on him to get off the phone. Jordan is on the phone actually, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with Penelope or whatnot. Had they heard anything and nothing has, you know, came through as of yet, right? So anyhow, both Tony and Rich are there to, you know, take his mind off of it. So they're going to take him out go work out a little bit. Hopefully that can, you know, get him back in a, in a space where he's good, right? At least for the time being. So anyhow, from there, you know, once Jordan gets off the phone, he comes over and he's like, what's going on with y'all? Um, Tony pretty much tells him that he and Danny, you know, they ain't on good terms right now. He pretty much overreacted about the whole situation with the handcuffs and his daughter bringing them to school and all of that stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So after he says that, then Rich comes around and he's telling his story about what went down the other day with he and Sabrina when, you know, they did what they did and the condom ended up slipping off. And he was pretty much thinking that she was trying to set him up. And Jordan and Tony are sitting here like, bro, no, that's not Sabrina, bro. Like, she's a good woman. Like, she would never, she would never try to trap you intentionally. Well, I'm hoping. I'm saying this right now. But, <laughs> but I honestly feel like that would not be my Sabrina doing that to you, bro. Like, you already told her that's not what you want. So I don't think she would be trying to trick you in that situation. And actually, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, as we're talking through this situation, like, either he's going to have to choose to stop doing what he's doing with her, even though he's obviously enjoying it, she's enjoying it. So once you both start enjoying it, then there's no stopping what y'all doing, all right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. So on the flip side of it, then you need to either go all the way and say, look, let me go ahead and get snipped, you know, and I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? So I could still put on my protection to protect myself. And it is what it is, right? So he's going to have to make a decision with that. But anyhow, from there, 
you know, they decide to leave. And, you know, Ethan, who has been sitting over there this whole time, listening to all of these conversations, is now getting on the phone to speak to none other than Hudson, right? So Hudson tells him that he wants him to plant a bug in Jordan's crib. And he's like, look, put it somewhere around the couch or whatnot. And Ethan has never done this. And Hudson is like, for real? He's like, no. So he tells him to locate something around the couch. So he does. He finds a picture of Andy and Jordan in it. And as he's trying to place the bug behind the picture frame, in walks Jordan. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, is he caught? Like, were you on to him? And, and you decided to come in to see what he was doing? You know, like parents used to do back in the day, like I'm gonna be back in about 20, 30 minutes, but they show up a little bit earlier or they leave for about five minutes and come back in. And he's like, oh, see, you were not doing what I asked you to do. Now go ahead, you see what I'm saying? Maybe that's what he was trying to do. So I'm not sure, I haven't watched the newest episode yet. So. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss shizzing it that's going down. I think I missed saying that earlier in this episode. My apologies on that. Don't get upset at me. So with that being said, I will holler at y'all later. Peace.